This is my all-time arsenal. In this video, I'm gonna show you how they roll and how they fit in the bag. So how do we choose bowling balls for an all-time arsenal? Well, there's six categories. First is the fresh. What balls am I gonna throw on the fresh? Next, a strong symmetric ball. Third, a pearl symmetric ball. Fourth, what am I gonna throw on the cliff when the lanes get really wet, dry, a lot of oil in the middle, a lot of hook towards the gutter? The fifth category is a ball that I can hook the entire lane with. And that's gonna be dependent on what balls you like and how you can throw certain bowling balls. And the last category is going to be a low RG, low differential ball. So we got the top of the bag here. You see Pitch Black, Alpha Crux, and Phase 2. And these three balls fit in four of our categories. So we got the Fresh. Um, all three balls can play on the Fresh for me. If I have to play a little straighter, I'm gonna throw the Pitch Black. Pitch Black's not looking so good, but I just have to play pretty straight. Usually it's Alpha Crux. And then if I have to hook the ball a little more, let's say I gotta get into 15 on the Fresh, it's probably gonna be Phase 2. Next category, Strong Symmetric Ball. And we got one ball here that fits that category, and that's the Phase 2. It's got a pretty strong core and a pretty strong cover. Next category, we have a uh, ball to hook the lane with. And really, I could do that with all three, depending on where. Uh, because my ball speed's kind of low and I can get around it and increase my axis rotation, that allows me to hook the ball probably more than most. Um, so I'd say that every single ball in my bag fits that category at some point, given the correct circumstances. And the fourth condition or category is the cliff. And where that fits for me is phase two and possibly alpha. Uh, I got a couple other balls in the bag that'll do the trick as well. But generally when they get really wet, dry, with the oil in the middle and the friction to the right, I'm trying to keep my hand nice and up the back of it. So it lays off the friction, but still wants to pick up in the oil. And the reason why I would throw the Alpha Crux in that situation is because it's a strong ball in itself with strong core, pretty strong cover. So it's naturally gonna wanna blend the lane out anyways. So I can get away with getting it around my hand for the Alpha Crux. Now we got the bottom half of the bag. We got IQ Tour, Idle Pearl, High Road Pearl. So these guys are gonna fit three of our categories. So our Pearl Symmetric Balls, we have Idle Pearl, High Road Pearl. Pretty self-explanatory, they're both pearls. Pearl Symmetric Balls. Our next category is the same as the top half balls to hook the lane. Given any circumstance, I can hook any of these bowling balls, so I would put all six balls in that category. And for our final category is the IQ Tour. Low RG, low differential. It just gives a different shape. Most balls have, I don't want to throw the numbers in there, but they have higher differentials than this ball, and the low diff allows it to float down the lane much easier uh, as to where a higher flying ball like the Idle Pearl is going to want to try to gain traction a little sooner. Composition is really important for these six categories. If you can have multiple bowling balls fit each one, that's ideal because you can, that's, that's basically what versatility is. You can have multiple balls do multiple things. That just adds to your arsenal more tools, more options, and that equals more success as long as you know how to use those tools. All right, so we're gonna start with the top of the bag. I wouldn't say it's the first ball out of my bag. When I'm practicing, you know, with the 10 minutes or 15 minutes of practice, I'm probably breaking the lanes down. Um, but you gotta know, if this is in play, we're throwing it every time, all day, every day. So that might take us a couple of shots to get lined up. Test shot. Next. Do we even need to throw another shot? Like everybody says, your thing makes the lanes worse, so. So we haven't thrown a whole lot of games. There might be two games bowled so far on this lane. On the fresh is when there's the most friction down the lane. So I'm looking for my ball to hook before the end of the pattern to smooth it out. That's why I like throwing urethane so much. Screw it, let's move left. The last shot looked pretty good, right? Maybe we should have stayed in the same spot. The only true tap in bowling, I'd throw that shot a hundred more times and it might strike 94 of them. Is that is that a good percentage? Six six percent stone eights? I don't think that's, that's like a 1% leave, right? So I'm gonna throw one more shot. I'm gonna take a big step to the left. The biggest thing about urethane is when it starts looking bad, don't be afraid to switch balls because making this thing work, probably not gonna strike very much. So we're gonna take a big chunk to the left now. And like I said, I like to hook the ball or I have the ability to. So let's see if I can get this one to work. It's probably a little too far left, but 
That's a three bagger. We're gonna shoot 300 with this arsenal. All right, so I was wrong. <laughs> we didn't strike the second shot. <laughs> it was so good. I thought we had a three bagger. So we're gonna keep making our way down the progression. And anybody that knows me knows I love Alpha Crux. Let's see if we can get lined up right here. We're gonna throw a few shots with my baby. All right, that tells me we gotta move a little further left. Oh, we gotta pick the ball speed up, but I don't like doing that, so I'm gonna keep moving left. I don't even remember where I stood. I'm just gonna take a guess. It's further left than the shot before. I think. Ow! Now the reason why I like this ball so much is because it's still pretty clean for a big asymmetric ball but it's really smooth. So I can play and vary my ball speeds a lot more, especially going on the low end, um, and still have this ball stay online. <clears throat> but when I really like these Alpha Cruxes, this one's brand new by the way, so when they get a lot of games on it and I just smash it with 500, it's like urethane 2.0. When they're still pretty fresh like this, I can get left and hook them a little bit. So we're gonna move about five here, see what we get. Versatility, that's what I like to see out of bowling balls. If they fit those six categories, if they can fit at least three of them, that's really good. And when you're building an arsenal, that's what you want to look for. And that's a big reason why these balls are in my all-time arsenal. Especially this one. This one can really do it all. I can throw it on a lot of different distances. Fits in a lot of those categories. I'll show you why. I've drilled a lot of these with good reason. I hate that hit so much, because it's so close. Phase two's transition off the friction for me, pretty slow. And that allows me to feel comfortable enough to you know, mess around with my hand positions without thinking it's gonna overhook, not overhook. It just blends the lanes for me really well. Let's make our adjustment. Four pins, normally like a two and one move, but I feel feisty today, I'm gonna move four. Drop my speed a little bit. And that's what I like to see. I got around it a little more. It doesn't overhook, shaped up really nice. Super continuous, which is a term I don't like to use, but that shot it was. I and mean, the reason why I don't like to use that because there's no bowling ball out there that's more continuous than another, per se. Because it depends on the circumstances, what the lanes are giving you and all that. So any ball could be more continuous than another given the right circumstances. We're gonna give it one more for the road. Move an extra amount. This is probably about five. Can we cut that? <laughs> ah, I threw that bad. That's one of my misses though, when I try to really hook it, because I have early timing. I get to here and I shoot my shoulder too far forward, too fast. One more shot. All right, next we're gonna move to the Idle Pearl. And you might be thinking, why phase two Idle Pearl? Instead of Axiom, Axiom Pearl, Idle, phase three. And these are just the two balls I find myself using the most and I've had the most success with. So that's why I choose these two for my, my benchmark bowling balls. These fit the middle of the bag pretty well. Let's see how quick we can get lined up with this one. That was pretty close. We'll play with our ball speeds. We'll do the fun thing. Whenever I do that, I just question myself. How do you ever miss a single pin? And you can just get up there and not even put your hand in the ball. We're gonna give her one more try. And this one will strike. That's why I like that ball. I got that one drilled pin down, about a five inch pin. And I don't like to drill my idles with the short buffers, shorter, which make them pin up because they just transition too quick and they want to go forward for me. The solution for me was longer buffer, 
takes a little bit longer to transition. I actually put surface on all my pro balls out of the box because they're too responsive when they get down the lane to the friction. Uh, they're too clean, makes it really hard to control. So we'd like to hit them with a little bit of surface to bring the ball reaction closer to us so it hooks before the end of the pattern. So we're gonna throw one more. The last one looked pretty nice. Let's try to replicate that. And that's why we hit our pro ball to the surface. I'm just kidding, that's not why. We just try to blend it out a little bit more. We don't want our bowling balls ripping off the back of the pattern too hard. Um, high Road Pearl had a little bit of surface. This idle has more surface than the High Road because I'm probably gonna be using it earlier in the block. So if the phase two isn't looking so good, maybe a little too smooth, I can go to this idle Pearl and hopefully it fits the bill. More often than not, though, it does. So my next ball after this would probably be the IQ Tour, which fits that low diff, low, low RG, low differential category. Some may say it's a strong symmetric ball. I see it as a weak one just because of uh, it's got R2S on it, so it's a little weaker than the Phase 2 and the Idle Pearl. So I'm going to move a little further back to the right. We'll see what this ball gives us. I guess I moved a little too far back. Got down the lane a lot better than the previous two balls. That's the combination of that weaker cover and the lower differential. All right, I'm going to move a few to the left. Oh, and throw it to the left. Oh! I probably missed an arrow to the left there. Maybe not an arrow, but it was a good chunk. But the reason why I have to have an IQ in my bag at all times, or a low RG, low differential ball, is because it's just a completely different shape. It's not gonna see that friction as hard. It's gonna wanna float through it a lot easier. It was kind of a tough call because I've been throwing the IQ Emerald a lot, but this ball's just been a staple in my bag for so long. So we'll try to curve this one, just like the other ones and see if we can find that same success. <laughs> I really don't have anything to say, <laughs> except I'm just, <laughs> I'm just not sharp right now. We're gonna try again. Game works dead zone, doesn't matter how easy the pattern is. If you throw it there, she's not hooking. So we're not gonna throw it there again. So that's a pretty good demonstration of why we need to have arsenals. Uh, not all your bowling balls are gonna look good at the same time, and you don't want them to all look good at the same time, because if that's the case, you're probably gonna run into some situations where one or two balls don't look good, you go to the other ones and they all look bad. So if you have a well-rounded arsenal, it gives you a much better chance to succeed more often than not. So we're gonna hit the bottom of the bag, High Road Pearl. Some of you might be questioning why I picked the High Road Pearl over the High Road in that Hybrid cover stock kind of brings it closer to the Idle Pearl. So I wanted to go as far down the spectrum as possible in terms of high roads. That's why I chose the High Road Pearl. <laughs> I just, I can't get a hit today. That's pretty close right there. I got a little too sharp, which is why we stoned the seven pin, thinking just a little too soon to be throwing this ball. So we're just gonna camp the same spot, maybe move our eyes in a touch, don't rotate it as much. Hey, there we go, that's pretty close. This is my all-time arsenal, and you know, this thing is subject to change as years go on. We find better balls that could potentially replace these, but when I go to a really big tournament and I'm only allowed to bring six bowling balls, these are the six you're gonna find in my bag. All right, everybody, that was my all-time arsenal. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I got nothing else to say because I'm really bad at outro, so peace. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> All right.